Why do we do what we do? As the church of Jesus Christ in the world today, as women and men who believe in Jesus and call ourselves Christians and together comprise the church, why do we do the things that we do? Why do we attend worship every week? Why do we invite others to come to church, to small group with us? Why do we serve? Why do we tithe or try to tithe or work toward tithing? Why do we study the Bible and why do we pray? So each message in this series of messages will answer one of these questions in this This Is Why series. Today, to date, we have heard two messages. If you missed, you are welcome to go to our website to read them or watch them. In week one, I answered the question, why should I attend? We attend for the same reason that we stop at a service plaza when we're traveling on a long journey, to be refueled, to be refreshed, to be reminded, to reconnect, and to be reinvigorated. Last week, we asked the question, why should I invite others to come? We invite because an invitation to church can be life-changing. We invite others to come to see what we have. When we invite, we are conveying our love for them. We invite them because we want them to have what we have. They need what we have. That is a relationship with God. And when we invite, then we place their hand on the door that leads to God. Today, I want us to consider why should we serve? Why do I serve? Why do we serve? We serve because we want to make a difference. We want to have a positive impact upon the world in which we live. When we look around, we see a world in need. We see a world that could use our help. The more aware we become of the world around us, the more we wonder if there are ways in which we can be of assistance. When we reflect upon our own lives, we can identify people who have had an affirming influence upon us. Think, for example, of the Sunday school teachers you've had, or the school teachers, or the scout leaders, or the pastors, or other influential people in your lives. Those individuals have served us, have served you and me out of the goodness of their hearts. They have served or continue to serve with no thought or reward for themselves, freely giving of their time and effort. They have a sense that they may be able to make someone's life better by teaching them, by guiding them, by influencing them in a positive way. And what is their reward? Their reward is knowing that they are being used by God. They experience joy in their lives because they know they are instruments in the hands of God and they make life better for others. Why do we serve? We serve out of a sense of gratitude and thankfulness. We serve to show God that we are grateful to God for all that God has done and all that God is doing in our lives. We know that we are created by God. In fact, we are created in the image of God. We know that God gives us life and health and amazing, amazing bodies. Our bodies have digestive systems and nervous systems and muscular and skeletal systems. Our bodies warm up when we are cold and cool down when we are hot. Our bodies can see and hear and taste and smell and feel and experience emotions. Our bodies can take in food and water and provide, provided by God and transform that into energy for living. But not just that, God gives us forgiveness, a sense of his presence, and the promise of eternal life. God gives us a savior, so we serve to say thank you to God for all of that. Listen to this list of names. Anna Porter, Eileen McKee, Margaret Ledger, Marlene Muse, Leah Gingery, Alan Knight, Gladys Cooper, Grandma Cooper, Charles Fulmer. Those are the names of all of my Sunday school teachers from preschool through junior high. They taught me about God and Jesus and how to be like Jesus. You may find this hard to believe, but I was not an easy student in many of those classes but they never gave up on me. 
We serve as an expression of thanks to past Sunday school teachers for taking an interest in us, for caring about us, for preparing a lesson every Saturday night for us so that we could learn more about Jesus and draw closer to God. Why do we serve? We serve out of a desire to be obedient to God. For me, and I think for us, we serve because we want to obey God. We want to obey God because we appreciate all that God has done for us. So I mentioned earlier the gifts of our bodies, and I mentioned people who have served us as reasons for us to be grateful. God has also made a great sacrifice for us when he gave us his one and only son. Jesus lived and suffered and died so that we could have eternal life. God loves us so much that he gave his son for us. We serve out of a sense of obedience because we recognize God's love for us and we love God in return. We want to please God with our lives. We want to do the things that God wants us to do. We do not want to do the things that God does not want us to do. We want to bring a smile to God's face and joy to God's heart by our actions and with our lives. We do not want to disappoint God. Jesus said to his disciples, go and make disciples, baptizing them of the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And we try to obey by serving in that way. Jesus tells the story of the Good Samaritan. It is the Samaritan who crosses racial and ethnic lines to care for a victim of thieves. And then Jesus asks, which of these was a neighbor to the man who fell among robbers? And the one who asked the question said, the one who had mercy on him. And then Jesus said, go and do likewise. That's why we serve, out of a sense of obedience because Jesus told us to do so. Why do we serve? We serve because we want to be like Jesus, and we want to follow his example. Jesus came into the world as God's son to lead a perfect life, to suffer and die, to pay for our sins, to be raised from death to life, to overcome the power of sin and evil in the world, and to provide us with eternal life. Jesus also came to live an exemplary life for us, to be an example for us to follow. When James and John went to Jesus to ask him for the seats of honor next to him, when Jesus' kingdom came to be, Jesus seized the opportunity to create a teaching moment. He said, whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant, and whoever wants to be first must be slave of all, for even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Jesus went to places most people did not want to go. He mingled with people whom most people did not want to mingle. Tax collectors, sinners, he did things that most people would not want to do. Feed the hungry, give water to the thirsty, invite strangers into their midst, and made them feel welcome and comfortable and important. He spent time with people and showed them that they were loved by him and loved by God. How many times have we heard the answer to our question, what should we do, that the answer to that question is, well, then let's think about what Jesus did or what Jesus would do. Jesus loved, Jesus cared, Jesus served. Go and do likewise. Why do we serve? We serve because we want to be a better person. We serve because we want to feel better about ourselves, the things we are doing, and how we spend our time. Seeking to be a better person comes from being blessed through the lives of people who lived trying to be better people. I've already mentioned people who've influenced my life. I've given you examples of people who have influenced your lives in a positive way. Many of them did the things that they did and became the people that they did in part, at least, because they wanted to be better people. Many were followers of Jesus Christ who recognized that their lives were better because Jesus was a part of it. They spent time trying to be better people, trying to do better things, and that included spending time with us. I'm not a perfect person. I am so far from that. 
I need Jesus as much as anyone. But I am a much better person than I would have been were it not for my pastors, my Sunday school teachers, my scoutmasters, and many other adults who invested their time into my life. The people who poured themselves into my life helped me to see that Jesus loved me and cared about me. They demonstrated that they loved me and cared for me. They made me want to love Jesus in return. They made me want to be a better person just as they were trying to be better people. And that made me and makes me want to serve. Why do we serve? We serve out of a sense of selflessness and what I like to call a sense of otherness. We serve to make it less about me and more about others. We serve because we love others, because we care about others, because we want what's best for others, because we want them to have a better life. That's why our youth remodel modest homes in Philippi, West Virginia every summer. That's why we sponsor education for children in Kenya. That's why we provide after-school meals for children at Bethany House Academy. That's why we give to provide clean, safe drinking water for the world. That's why some of our people are Stephen ministers. But it's also why we have a preschool and child care center to teach children numbers and shapes and letters and colors but also to teach them how important they are to God. And that's why we agree to teach Sunday school, to teach children about Jesus. And it's why we step out of our own comfort zones to say, hello, welcome to Ingemar Church, to people that we have never seen before on a Sunday morning so that they might feel welcome and loved and important. And it's why we serve on committees and teams and to make sure our facilities are pleasant and our decisions are wise and honoring of God. And it's why we join the choir and the band and the orchestra and the bells so that others will be blessed and drawn closer to God in worship. And it's why almost every week we ask some of you to take a turn in the nursery so that mothers of young children can worship on Sundays to reconnect with God without their children climbing all over them. We serve because Jesus asks us to do so. Because Jesus said, love each other as I have loved you. And because Jesus said, whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant. And because John reminds us in his letter, we love because he first loved us. That's why we serve. And if you aren't one of the ones who serves in any way, I hope you will. But if you are one of the ones who serve in any way, I say to each one of you on behalf of all of us, thank you very much. We are called to serve. You know, Monday night we had a, uh, a uh, finance meeting. We were talking about the budget. And Blake McKim, who is our leadership council chairperson, was responsible for devotions that night. And I guess he knew that we were preaching about serving the following week because he shared this as part of his devotion. It is a quote from Rick Warren. Rick Warren is the pastor of Saddleback Community Church in California. He says, many people have the misconception that being called by God is something only missionaries and pastors, nuns, and other church leaders experience. But the Bible says that everyone is called to serve by serving others. We are not saved by serving, but we are saved for serving. The Apostle Paul gives us three insights into this. First of all, the basis of serving is salvation. Paul says you were called to be free. You cannot serve God until you've been set free by Jesus. It is the prerequisite for serving. Until you experience the transforming power of God's grace in your life, you're too enslaved by your own hurts, your own habits, and your own hang-ups to think much about others. Without the freedom of forgiveness, you'll end up serving for the wrong reasons, trying to earn the approval of others, 
trying to run away from your pain, trying to remedy your guilt, trying to impress God. Service motivated by these illegitimate reasons is bound to leave you empty, burned out, and bitter in the end. Second point, the barrier to serving is selfishness. Let me say that again. The barrier to serving is selfishness. Paul warns, do not use your freedom to indulge the sinful nature. The number one we reason we don't have time or the energy to serve others is that we are preoccupied with our own agendas and our own dreams and our own pleasures. The number one reason we don't have the time or the energy to serve others is that we are preoccupied with our own agendas, our own dreams, and our own pleasures. Only a small minority of people use their lives to serve others. But Jesus said, if you insist on saving your life, you will lose it. Only those who throw away their lives for my sake and the sake of the good news will ever know what it means to really live. It's one of the reasons why we talk about enabling others to experience life in all its fullness. Third, Third, the motive for serving is love. Paul says, serve one another in love. This is an important key to building community. 1 Corinthians 13, 3 records, no matter what I say or what I believe or what I do, I am bankrupt without love. God is far more interested in why you serve others than how well you serve them. This is still Rick Warren. He's always looking at your heart. Serve willingly and eagerly out of love for Jesus and grateful for all that he has done for you. You are most like Jesus when you are serving others. You are most like Jesus when you are serving others. After washing his disciples' feet, Jesus said, I have given you an example to follow. Do as I have done for you. My friends, I'd like you to give your attention to the back of the uh, Connect card because there are several steps that you can take in response to this message today. First, you could memorize this passage, Mark chapter 10, 43 and 44, and you could pray about having an open heart to serving. You could find a place to serve. You could find other places where you could serve in addition or instead of where you are serving now. We have passed out in, in the pews today two pieces for your consideration. One is this white piece of paper that is called serving, and it offers you places where you might serve in the life of our church. And you can certainly do that. And so if you think there are places here where you would like to serve, you can get in touch with Jamie Petrick, and her name is on the back of this. The second document that we gave you is an opportunity to, is a catalog of our mission outreach responsibilities. And so it lists the mission projects that we support, and it also gives you an idea as to how you can help in those particular places. And if you're interested in serving in one of those ways, you can either contact those organizations or, or you can talk with someone on our missions committee, and they are wearing their mission badges today. Serving is a way in which we say thank you to God. It is a way in which we are obedient to Jesus Christ. And so I invite you to find a place where you can serve. I believe we are a great church, but I think we can be greater. I think there is more for us to do, great opportunities for us to serve. So if you are not currently serving, I hope that you will find a place to serve. And if you would like information or assistance in deciding where to serve, please feel free to ask me or Dennis or anyone from our church staff. Will you pray with me, please? Gracious God, we give you thanks for your love and care, and we invite you to help us to discover where we might serve you. Lord, help us to recognize that we are blessed by you and help us to desire to respond to your love by loving you in return and by demonstrating that love by serving you. Give us time, God, to think about those places where we might have an impact upon our surroundings 
and guide us in all things. In your name we pray, amen.